This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or am learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. Now this is a trioxane. It's a few, it's used for like, uh, you know, outdoorsmen people. Uh, you know, they go camping and stuff like that, or in the military. You, know, you can use it. It's a fuel tablet. It, each box usually comes with three, three tablets. Mine are, they have different size tablets. I think mine are the smallest tablets you can get. Um, but they come in these packages. You can get these anywhere. Like I said, they're just for, like, survivalist, especially right now with Biden. Uh, people need survivalist stuff, that's for sure. Uh, so you can buy as much as you want of this. It's no big deal. They probably have them in army supply stores and stuff like that. They might, and they probably have them at Walmart. Now that I think about it, in the camping section or whatever. Uh, and they obviously have it on eBay and stuff like that, Amazon. Now, if you buy these type of boxes, you know that look like they're from the military. Uh, you most likely won't have a problem. But keep in mind, I looked up the MSDS before I bought this, right? <laughs> and so I knew it was right. What I'm, why, what, the whole point I'm making is sometimes it'll be like 50% hexamine and 50% trioxane, and they'll label it as trioxane. You know what I mean? This is like 90% trioxane. No hexamine. You know what I mean? It's just all stuff that can easily be stay in the pot, you know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> so keep that in mind. If you buy some trioxane, they're not all 90% trioxane like this or higher. Uh, some of them are only 50%. Some of them are even lower. So you got to keep that in mind if you decide to buy any of this stuff, you know what I mean? Look up the MSDS first. All right, so I bought some trioxane. This is a pack. What I'm going to do is open them up, dump them all into this cup. You can see it's just a bar, one bar per package. You can break these with your fingers, but some of them are hard. If you fight like this one, I just get a pair of pliers. Squeeze it a little bit, and it and it'll break easy after that. You want small enough pieces so that you can get them into your round bottom flask. You know what I mean. And once so once they're that small, that's as small as they need to be broken up. Now, I already did this experiment once, and you can see it has some crap in it. So I'm just basically going to put these pieces into here. Okay, here's my setup. You see I got the stuff in there. This is from a previous batch. I'll throw it on here. You can see this goes up and down. It's not on there very tight. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to melt. You can see the crystals starting to form. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's actually starting to come over a little bit. Looks like the glass is cracked. It looks like the glass is cracked, but it's just uh, crystals forming. See, those are crystals, not cracks. Keep in mind, this isn't formaldehyde, it's the acetal of formaldehyde. 
So it can easily be changed into formaldehyde just, you know, with some proton, some water, heat it up a little, and boom, you have formaldehyde. Although if you add water, it'll be formalin, which is formaldehyde. It's uh, dissolved in water. <clears throat> and these crystals are like, wow, they're beautiful. I wish I could show them on camera. You can't really see very good with my cheap camera. Uh, but they are like beautiful crystals. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I did it to dryness almost. You can see there's a little bit of, I left a little bit in there. It's dripping back. Okay, so there it is. And that, those aren't cracks. Now, I got about 85 just about a mole of trioxane, but that's three moles of uh, formaldehyde almost. So anyways, what we made was 1,3,5-trioxane. Here's a couple of name, other names for it. It's a cyclic trimer of formaldehyde. You can see there's the carbon, there's the oxygen, and it has two hydrogens, just like a uh, formaldehyde. Same over here, carbon. Two hydrogens and an oxygen. Carbon, two hydrogens and an oxygen. Uh, now, tri trioxane, trioxane is usually used interchangeably with formaldehyde and paraformaldehyde. Um, it has a melting point of 62 and a boiling point of 115. And that's why we didn't use a water-cold condenser. Uh, because it solidifies so easily. Uh, you want to have a... Uh, uh, heat gun like this you know an industrial heat gun that you get at uh, it's like a hair dryer but it's industrial it gets real hot you never you never dry your hair with it you'd end up burning yourself <coughs> uh, so anyways uh, when we were doing the distillation um, sometimes you're if you do this and you have a small condenser uh, you could see I used a short path condenser And I don't know if you can see this, but this is actually just a uh, a part that uh, you know you'd use on a distillation. You'd have your thermometer in here, right? Your Vigrex column would come up this way from your pot, and then you just go out to your condenser, and this would have your thermometer in it. Now, I didn't show it on on the in the video, but I did use my hair dryer or my you know my industrial heat gun. I did use it once to you know, melt the stuff out of here. It wasn't that it was clogged up. I just wanted to get, get all the product down into the round bottom flask. That's the, that's the pot, the reaction pot. So that was why we used it. We didn't have a water cold condenser. Uh, it pretty much solidified by itself. You should actually have a water bath on your receiving flask. I didn't do that, though. I mean, but you got to be careful. Anyways, uh, Trioxane is a cyclic acetal, and acetals can be broken back into the carbonyl groups, meaning back into the formaldehyde, with excess H2O and a dash of mineral acid. Now, I want you to think about this, right? When you make methylamine, right, methylamine hydrochloride, you use form formalin and you use ammonium chloride. Formalin is just formaldehyde plus water. So if I throw my trioxane into some water with a little bit of mineral acid, just a dash, and heat it up, it will break the trioxane down into formaldehyde that is in water. So it will break it down into formalin. And what do you do when you have this and this? You heat it up. Well, how do you make the trioxane into formaldehyde? You put it in water with a dash of mineral acid. And we're going to be making acid, so it doesn't really matter that we're throwing a little dash in, right? That, and then we heat it up. That's how we, we throw trioxane into water, heat it up, and it turns into formalin. Well, all we have to do is put trioxane into some water with a little bit of HCl, put it in with the uh, ammonium chloride, and heat it up and do the same exact way you would as if this was formalin. It's that simple. The only difference is the molar mass of 
triopsin is 90 degree uh, 90 grams and the molar mass of formaldehyde is 30 grams you see that Cause this is a trimer that means there's three formaldehydes in there that's why there's three times as much weight 30 times 3 is 90 now I had five tablets I put into that reaction flask and I got 85 grams <clears throat> Divide that by five, that's 17 grams per tablet. And remember, formaldehyde is 30 grams per mole. So that's a half a mole, a little bit more than half a mole. So two tablets is almost one mole, I mean a little bit over one mole. I had nine tablets all together. I did an experiment before this where I had four of them. So that's four and a half moles, or almost. You know, it's a little bit, a little bit more than four and a half moles. Uh, it should be 153 grams. Now this sentence here I got out of Wikipedia. In the lab, trioxane is used as an anhydrous source of formaldehyde. There was no picture, um, but this, this is true for even formalin. If you have formaldehyde in water, you can get anhydrous uh, formaldehyde. Just put it in a flask, heat it up, and you got a condenser here. The condenser on the when the stuff boils, right, water comes up, formaldehyde comes up, but if you have a cold condenser, the water will go back into the pot, whereas the, uh, what do you call it, the formaldehyde will come up here and uh, be a gas. Then you can run it through a dryer, you know, like some calcium chloride or something like that, and then run it into some water, or your reaction, whatever, because it's going to be anhydrous. Uh, and it's that simple. Anyway, once again, there's my product. Look, there, I like those uh, cracks. Looks just like cracks, but they're crystals. Those are so good. So I think pure. I don't know what it is. Anyways, I always remember, science is great, means I have a great day.